Hello everyone, I'm Davud Gosli and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, my primary aim to announce something, announce a, an event, seminar, a three-part seminar that I'm doing in collaboration with Inside Seminars. The plan is to get together and meet over three sessions each time for two hours. Uh, I'm going to try to limit my presentation each time to about half an hour and then discuss what we find in Jung's own text. So we want to focus on Jung's own writing and we will select because um, I want us to get as much as we can out of the text. So instead of reading a lot, let's focus on just a few for each uh, session. We will focus on two essays written by Jung himself. And uh, we, our aim is to try to see the meanings we can get the connections between the text, the ideas, and our own life tasks, problems, questions, trying to make connections with uh, between Jung's ideas and our own concerns. When a thinker is important, when a thinker has gives us a complex body of work, a very rich body of work, and I believe that is the case in uh, in Jung. In Jung's case, uh, despite my disagreements with him, despite you know the weirdness of the strangeness of some of his ideas, he is significant. And part, one of the consequences of that significance is that we can have different interpretations of him. We can have different pathways into his work and each reader can find their own reasons to return to Jung, to, to engage with Jung's works. So I recently wrote, uh, I posted something about my own reasons for reading Jung, for returning to Jung. Uh, so I'll quickly go over these, my reasons. So primarily for me, first and foremost, when I think about Jung, I think of him as a thinker of solitude, as someone who, for, for him, I think solitude, loneliness, being disconnected, being disconnected from the authority, authority figures, including starting with uh, his father, and then later when he was, um, I think, 38 he had another huge struggle with authority in, in his relationship with Freud. And the kind of, I think, detachment, being on his own, being disconnected for him was a big part of his uh, personal life. And it was a mix of, I think, solitude for him was a mix of um, choice and destiny. It was, he, he found himself in situations where it was difficult for him to connect to trust authority, to not go his own way. And then he, he voluntarily also uh, chose that path to, to kind of find resources in solitude, to continue to discover what is involved in a solitary mode of being. And what is involved in a solitary mode of being is not necessarily egocentrism, just a selfish focus on self. And you don't, whatever you find in, <laughs> in your inner life, in your inner world has nothing to do with culture and society. In fact, um, there's a lot about society, there's a lot about culture, there's a lot, a lot about history, human nature, um, our collective nature, collective the character of, a, of, of our collective life that we can discover when we pay attention, close attention to our personal lives. So a lot of our political, um, a lot of the features of our uh, communal political lives are reflected in our family lives and in our personal life a lot of our personal dispositions the thing that things that we find in our solitary mode of living and being experiencing um, reflects larger patterns and, te and tendencies uh, that are not themselves personal they're not isolated so solitude was a path for him it was uh, an aspect of his method and he developed uh, techniques to to turn solitude into insight. His methods of dream analysis, active imagination, uh, kind of close attention to images, and withholding of interpretation and judgment. That's so. That's reason one. Solitude. The, the second reason for me is uh, the way in which he focused on adult life as opposed to childhood. So that was a kind of a departure from Freudian classical Freudian analysis, psychoanalysis. Um, and this is, this is a point that 
uh, we should understand, Jung did not completely, um, completely disagree with Freud. He instead he said, "I'm more interested in the in the type of problem that escaped the Freudian framework." So he said, "Yeah, there are of course it is possible for people to have lingering problems, um, to have to experience neuroses because of something that happened to them in childhood. It's possible for early life to shape to cause problems in our later life, but that is not." always the case. That's not the only root of our problems. We can regress to um, earlier ways of relating because we have a, a problem at hand, a task at hand that is too difficult. So the focus of our analysis should be the present. At least in some cases, what we should focus on uh, and what we should try to understand is the present problem. And that regression to the past, that go, return to the past that a person the neurotic person might uh, might enact, might might perform, is a solution to that to that present problem. Sometimes, in a, in, a, in that therapeutic sense, in that uh, in the sense of selecting what cases, what type of problems he was interested in, um, partly as a matter of int- the, the differences in interest. So he said there are patients that would benefit more from a, a Freudian approach, a Freudian style of therapy, but he. Jung wouldn't would not be interested in that. He wouldn't have been interested in in those cases as much. He was interested in people who are who have made it to the adult life, who have made it to into adulthood, and they have for the most part they have functional lives. They are productive members of the society, and they still have that feeling that something is missing. They have that sense of imbalance or lack um, that is difficult to express. So his focus was on functioning adult lives, that the so-called normal life that is on the surface free of problems, but um, he argued that there are things that that life is still lacking and uh, is is uneasy about, uncomfortable with, and we can explore that. The, the, the third reason is that Jung is uh, continuously being misrepresented in contemporary debates, contemporary discourse, misused and misrepresented. Um, so I'll just say very briefly that if someone tells us that um, you know archetypes of masculinity and femininity, because these archetypes exist, because they are part of our um, our psychological lives, because we resonate a lot, very strongly with masculine and feminine archetypes, and that at that division makes sense to us, that those are the only paths for men and women to go on that you should be you should be subscribed to and live up to a masculine archetype if you are a man if you're born as a biological male and vice versa for a woman uh, that is not what jung said archetypes are reflective of our history they are reflective of the past they are reflective of the tendencies that we have we have had we've come up with and uh, again we might return to as a familiar place, as a kind of a force field that, that grabs us or pulls us towards itself. It doesn't mean that those archetypes are the only solutions we have. Understanding the past is useful, it is necessary, uh, if we want to do something new in the present, if we want to create, construct new solutions, new styles, new forms of being. Um, to move forward, to act, live in the present, it's good to understand the past and understand part of understanding the past is those um, those frequently adopted tendencies that have constructed those archetypes deep down deep in, in our psychology. Uh, in a similar way, Jung should not be used against an understanding of he shouldn't be used to attack um, transgender issues again based on that how deeply ingrained these masculine and feminine archetypes are uh, in human psychology because uh, we don't want to be we don't want the past we don't want what we have done no matter how deeply ingrained in our psychology even if we accept Jung's uh, basic postulates basic statements about these archetypes it doesn't have to dictate what we do now and what we do in the future that's the the first point and the second point is that Jung's own position is not about returning to archetypes and using archetypes. 
exclusively when we are dealing with the present. Um, so, uh, the next reason it has to do with Jung's limitation and inconsistencies and his kind of biases and prejudices, pre prejudices that uh, are the product of where he was working, when he was working, his immediate environment. He has uh, many passages where um, we now would find unacceptable the way he talks about women, the way he kind of refers to a logical woman as a kind of problem, as a kind of um, deviation from the correct path. Uh, and he, in a very puzzling way, every time he talks about, um, especially in his discussion of animus, that um, he talks about female resentment, uh, combining with, you know, whenever a woman adopts masculine traits. But there are a lot of inconsistencies. There's, there are a lot of um, contradictions in Jung's work that are not necessarily problems. And for me, these are really the, the good parts in Jung because uh, they help us to have a human image of him as opposed to a superhum superhuman image, a, a master that has, has had all the answers, had all the visions, and is enough to, if you read Jung, it will be enough for us. It would not be enough. And that insight is something that we get from reading Jung himself. Um, so the, the pieces of writing that we will discuss in our um, seminar. They include the basic postulates of analytical psychology. Um, that's the first one. The second one is titled The Relation Between the Ego and the Unconscious. This is from, it's taken from his two essays uh, on analy analytical psychology. The third, uh, so these, those two we read and discuss on uh, for the first session on November 30th. The second and uh, the second session, we will read the concept of the archetype, which is a very short piece, just some clarifications about what archetypes are. And then we read the, the psychology of the child archetype. That's for our second session. And in our third session, we turn to uh, the practical side of Jung, first reading the aims of psychotherapy, and then a short essay on synchronicity, what synchronicity is. And then here I, I would, uh, I try to emphasize why things like synchronicity should not, in my view, in my understanding of of Jung, should not lead to, um, like a belief in parapsychology and then opening up the, the door to doing parapsychological research and uh, research into the occult uh, phenomena. It is about something else. It is about an emphasis in participation. Um, I mean, when we have an experience of synchronicity, when we have experiences that kind of connect with the concept of synchronicity, that is a very Jungian response to that. It's very different from a scientific uh, critical response. It has to do with letting go. It has to do with kind of immersing, your, immersing and not questioning in order to get something out of that experience of synchronicity that that are unavailable otherwise, that are unavailable from the perspective of a rational, uh, logical uh, attitude or point of view. Okay, so now um, let's say that you don't want to join uh, this seminar, um, which is totally fine. I still have recommendations for you. I, I think many people start reading Jung um, with his autobiography or like biography or biography the biography that he that he wrote together with Aniela Jaffe uh, and that, that's memories dreams and reflections that's for me it's a little bit too religious re religion religious sounding for me that's not my favorite place uh, to to understand to study Jung uh, similarly man and his symbols again not my favorite place. Uh, Jung's own contribution is quite good in that, but I don't. I'm not a big fan of the other contributions. Um, 
in that collection. The essay by Jung in Man and His Symbols is, is good, but it's a kind of a summary of his other writings, a, a recap of uh, his earlier works. The place that I would recommend to go first would be, to, assuming you're interested in reading Jung's own writing, would be the collection of essays titled Man, uh, no, Modern Man in Search of a Soul. So Modern Man, the modern human in search of a soul. And uh, two of the essays in our seminar is taken from that collection, the ba Basic Postulates essay and the Aims of Psychotherapy. And I also really like the two essays. Um, two essays or two contributions? I think two essays in on analytical psychology and um, one of them being the the one we are also talking about, the relation between the ego and the unconscious. And uh, then if you like those, um, you can get into psychological types, symbols of transformation. And uh, another collection that I really liked that was published after the, the first edition of Symbols of Transformation in 1916 is uh, Collected Papers in Analytical Psychology. In that collected papers, there are three really foundational essays about psychoanalysis and how Jung is has already, at that point, he has already kind of parted ways with Freud, but he's still kind of elaborating the fundamental assumptions uh, in psychoanalysis. Uh, so catching Jung at that, at that point where he's uh, clarifying the foundations of his approach, uh, analytical psychology, explicitly addressing the, the fundamental assumptions. Um, that's very useful in understanding his other works as well. If you like uh, to read secondary literature, um, Anthony Stevens has a short book, like a very short introduction to Jung, which is quite good. Um, David Tacey has uh, another short book called uh, How, to, How to Read Jung, I think. That's okay. Uh, I think David Tacey is too fond of Jung to be able to offer a, an unbiased introduction. There's a short book by Frida Fordham, uh, which I think I have somewhere here. Frida Fordham uh, wrote this short introduction to Jung, to Jung's work. This is Frida. Uh, she was a social worker and very accessible and very practically minded. So this is a good introduction to Jung. And if you open the first pages, you see an introduction by Carl Jung himself. So originally, this the first edition of this book was published in, um, I think, 1953. 1953, so that is before Jung's death. Jung died in 1961. So Jung had a chance to read this introduction to his... Um, to his work and write a one-page forward to it. It's a one-page forward, which kind of might indicate his lack of enthusiasm. He wasn't enthusiastic enough, but it's a very positive forward. Um, he says that Mrs. Frida Fordham has undertaken the by no means easy task of producing a readable resume of all my various attempts at a better and more comprehensive understanding of the human psyche. As I cannot claim to have reached any definite theory explaining all or even the main parts of the psychical complexities, my work consists of a series of different approaches, or one might, uh, or one might call it a circumambulation of unknown factors. This makes it rather difficult to give a clear-cut and simple account of my ideas. Moreover, I always felt a particular responsibility not to overlook the fact that the psyche does not only reveal itself in the doctor's consulting room, but above all in the wide world, as well as the depth of history. I was always convinced that a fair picture of the psyche could only be obtained by a comparative method, but the great disadvantage of such a method consists in the fact that one cannot avoid the accumulation of comparative material, with the result that the layman becomes bewildered and loses his track in the maze of parallels. So that's uh, another possible place to go. There's also Anthony Storr's collection, uh, selection of writings which are arranged in such a way to emphasize and show the continuity and consistency in Jung's thoughts. Uh, Anthony Storr's collection is called The Essential Jung. 
uh, which I like very much. Okay, um, I think that's that's all. I, it, this video became longer than I had expected. Um, if you have any questions, if you're interested in joining the seminar, um, feel free to comment. If you're not interested, feel free to ask questions or comments. If you have other interests in Jung, if you think that we should not read Jung for not being scientific enough, you can also comment um, <laughs> at that as a comment. Otherwise, thank you for your attention and I will speak with you in future videos.